Okay, let's talk about the MTL General Curriculum Assessment. And specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, the math portion of this assessment. And if you're watching this uh, video, I assume you are a teacher or, or an aspiring teacher in the great state of Massachusetts. So welcome. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. So I definitely know what it's like to take uh, certification exams. And on this particular um, assessment, uh, you know, you're going to have to know a considerable amount of math. So if you haven't taken a look um, at the kind of math that's going to be on the MTL general curriculum assessment, I would definitely encourage you to, to really, you know, kind of scan and make sure you're ready for it. Um, because again, you know, there's a really a decent amount of mathematics. So if you're an elementary teacher, you know, you'll be surprised that, you know, wow, you're, you're, you're going to have to know like high school level algebra and geometry amongst other topics to do well on this. So um, again, you know, if you're just starting out preparing for this, really get become aware of what's on this assessment. Now, my tablet class math program really been, this has been many, many years in the making. What I do there is I've uh, developed several online courses, uh, complete full courses. I've worked actually with schools and I also have a, a real big library of test prep courses. And I actually have a specific MTL general curriculum uh, math uh, assessment prep course. So I'm gonna leave the link to that course in a description of this video if that's something you wanna check out. But what I have here for you is kind of a little bit of a pop quiz, and uh, we'll see if you can do this problem. Now, this is the type of problem. Um, there, well, there's a lot of different topics, again, uh, for the math uh, component uh, for the general curriculum assessment. Uh, but this kind of level of math is something you should be able to handle. So let's go ahead and see if you can um, solve the problem. Now, if you can, um, of course, I'm going to solve the problem. But if you think you can, I would encourage you to pause the video and... Um, give it a whirl. Um, if not, I'm going to go ahead and explain it now. So what we're dealing with is an equation, obviously, right? Because here in math, when you see this symbol, we're talking about an equation. Now, just a quick little review in algebra, basic algebra, kind of algebra one, in the high school level algebra, you study various different types of equations. So we learn how to solve um, what we call linear equations. Let's do a quick example. Something like this would be an example. That's a linear equation. Um, then you learn how to solve uh, systems of equations. So that would be something like this. Now I'm not going to solve uh, these equations here. I'm just trying to kind of like go down memory lane with you here for a second because all of you have seen this. I don't know if you remembered or not, but Back in high school, uh, if you're at this point, you know, as a professional, you've definitely gone through this either in college algebra, somewhere along the line you study this. Uh, you could also have a quadratic equation, something like this, uh, for example. So there's all different types of equations. Now, uh, and there's much, many, many more that we can uh, talk about. But one particular type of equation that you study is something called a radical equation. So uh, equations that involve square root symbols, let's just kind of say, like, uh, say it like that. So here we have a uh, radical equation, and that's a specific type of equation. And in Algebra 1, you learn how to solve these various different type of equations. They, and, and they all require kind of a different approach, okay? So it's not like you just learn how to solve equations and, and that's that. So anyways, Hopefully that kind of like eh, maybe kind of stirred up some memory, memories of learning this stuff. So here we have a radical equation. I'd like you to solve for x. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this now. So what we want to do, the first thing we want to do here is we want to get rid of the square root. So to get rid of the square root, let me just use a simple equation. Okay. Let's just, I'm going to kind of teach you this very kind of crash course, if you will, on how to solve radical equations. So here I have the square root of x equals 2. Okay, now think about x is in algebra just represents some number. So if I just said to you, and I just even said it verbally, not even just wrote it out, I said, hey, the square root of what number is 2? And let's say that again. The square root of what number is 2? You would say, oh, that's 4. And I would say, oh, yes, that's right. Now, we know the answer is 4, so I want to know what x is, but I got this square root. 
here. So what I can do to get rid of it is just to square that. Okay, anytime you want to get rid of a square root, just square it. But if you square one side of the equation, you got to square the other side of the equation. So when I square both sides, I get x. Again, the square root symbol goes away, and then 2 squared is 4. Okay, so I'm just using this real basic uh, kind of illustration here to, to point out that when you have a radical equation, a square root specifically, there's other types of radical equations. We can take the cube root and they, you know, we're, we're getting, it's going to get more sophisticated, but when you only have the square root uh, in a, a particular equation just like this, we can just square both sides and that's what we want to do first. We want to get rid of that square root symbol. Okay, so when I square this left hand side, Okay, the square root symbol is going to go away, and then I just got to figure out what the right hand side is. So this leaves me with 2x plus 1, okay, is equal to 3 squared, which is 3 times 3 or 9. So at this point, uh, all we have to do is just go ahead and just solve this basic linear equation. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. I have 2x is equal to 8, then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. I get x is equal to 4. Now, kind of a technical thing we need to do here. So this is our solution, but we really have to when we, and I don't want to over explain this, but it's important. When you solve a radical equation, okay, you always need to check your solution. So here we're like, okay, hey, we got the answer x is equal to 4. In, in, ge in general, yes, this is the answer, but it's not, we have to validate the answer because sometimes we can get something called extraneous roots. Uh, so again, I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson. That's what my, my, my prep course is for. But what we need to do is just plug this, this um, solution, plug it back into the radical equation and see if this actually uh, uh, balances. Okay, so for example, what we're going to do here is going to be 2. I'm going to replace this x with 4. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and simplify the left hand side. So this is going to be the square root of 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. And, and we're going to see does this check? Okay, does this solution check? 8 plus 1, the square root of 9, is that equal to 3? Yes, the square root of 9 is actually equal to plus or minus 3. So yes, this is true. Okay, that's a true statement, meaning that in fact this is a good solution, not an extraneous solution. Now, again, I don't want to go into a complete lesson what's an extraneous solution, but just know that sometimes in the course of, of uh, solving radical equations, you can get a solution at this point in the problem and then when you go plug it back in, it doesn't work out. So that's why you always have to check your solutions. All right, so if you understood all that, then that's you know um, excellent for sure. Uh, but it's by no means kind of like, well, now you, you know this is all you need to know <laughs> for the MTL general curriculum assessment. There's a lot of math you, you know to cover, algebra and geometry and amongst other topics. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, wrap up this video. So um, the whole point here is to help you out, you know, prepare for this exam and maybe, uh, um, you know, motivate you uh, to, to, you know, properly because sometimes the best motivation comes from reality. Right? It's like, well, uh, times, you know, these titles, especially elementary um, assessments, you know, when you look at this, oh, general, it's just general curriculum, you know, maybe I just need to know general math or, or whatnot. These, these, these things can be kind of deceiving, but when you really know what's you know to be expected of you then you could be, be like hey you have the proper motivation uh, to be like oh wow I really have to you know um, study a lot to do it and that's you know that's your best thing is to kind of get the information about what you're going to be facing so you can come up with a good plan a good study plan and that's what I'm trying to do to help you out so Hopefully I did a decent job with that. Again, if you think you like my teaching style uh, and you want to check out my full MTL uh, general curriculum um, assessment, my math prep course to that, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link uh, to that course in the description of this video. At the time of this video, I've been on YouTube for 12 plus year. I have uh, 12 plus years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on uh, YouTube. It's something I'm really proud of. Um, I just been, you know, I'm really passionate about teaching math, and I've been doing it for a long, long time, and I'm um, pretty proud of the fact that now we have like 126,000 plus subscribers at the time of this video, and like 13 million views. It's just, 
you know, I put videos out there. Sometimes they're, you know, a few people watch them. Sometimes millions of people watch them. Either way, I'm just going to, I just teach. You know, I, did, I love to teach math. Um, and it keeps me sharp as a, as a teacher as well. So hopefully, you know, I uh, have a kind of teaching style that you kind of can understand. But it's one teacher to another, you know, just doing doing my thing, you know, as a, as a teacher. Uh, and uh, that's what I've been doing for a long time. And that's what I'll always will, uh, continue to do. Um, but again, I want to uh, encourage you that uh, I always say these, especially when I'm speaking to teachers, that if this is your first time or your second time or third time taking this assessment, it's okay. A lot of people, a lot of teachers, uh, you may know this or you may not know this, a lot of teachers have to retake um, or don't make or pass um, certification or assessments the first time out. So this is your second or third time. Don't beat yourself up. Just get a good study plan going forward. Figure out, hey, what, where's your weaknesses and then how, you know, figure out how to address them. Oftentimes it's math. Um, for a lot of uh, folks out there, so that's where I'm going to, you know, try to hopefully help you out. But I want to encourage you though, just don't quit and don't get, don't beat yourself up and don't get overly frustrated because there's a lot of teachers out there, many, 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 maybe even the majority, who knows, that have to take um, certification or professional exams more than once. Totally not uh, uh, uncommon. Uh, uh, so, anyways, I want to encourage you just. Keep trying, do what you got to do until you do pass this particular assessment. Hey, if you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Is this your first time taking this? Do you, are you finding it difficult? Um, you know, maybe share a little bit about, you know, your, uh, you know, where you're, you're going to be teaching middle school math, high school math, uh, elementary, you know, what's your interest? Um, any feedback is good feedback, but you know, um, from one teacher to another, I definitely know what it's like to take certification exams. I definitely know what it's like to teach in a classroom. Um, I know how challenging it is, but at the same token, um, I know how rewarding it is. So if you're just coming into education from college, um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's told you this. If you've only heard the, how tough it's going to be and this and that, listen. You're not going to experience the great rewards of teaching until you actually get in the classroom and you're actually teaching real life uh, kids. So don't quit. Um, do what you got to do uh, to uh, get that title. And I wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.